this story, whenever you have a particularly good protagonist, you need an equivalently bad antagonist to be able to balance the system out. Um, well, in real life, the same concept can apply, like what we're going to be talking about today. Hey guys, my name is Dave, welcome to another video. Except, what we're talking about here is going to be just a little bit more realistic. When it comes to a job, you'll have bad managers and bad employees in general. On the other hand, you'll also have equivalently good ones. Now, when I say bad and or good, I don't directly mean, like, they're just bad people. I also subsequently mean that they are just not good at the job. In the topic that I work, a lot of the time, bad seems to be a really, really, really big thing. Just bad employees, because first of all, no one ever seems to want to work fast food. But secondly, those who usually end up getting hired are people who are very lazy, or don't want to do the job, that are there people who just, they'll be there, they'll do the job, but they'll do it very poorly, just because they want to get home and do these really idiotic things that people shouldn't do because it could hurt them. But, every once in a while, you will find a really good apple that balances out those bad employees. And today, I think I came across another one of those. Outside of my boss, and maybe like one or two others, unincluding Pink Fox, there aren't very many people at my job who actually care about the job or care about the employees, depending on whether it's a manager or a generic employee. Well, today I think I finally found, yeah, it's like a third manager who actually does care, not in a sense where it's like they just listen, but in a sense where they act upon what they hear. And luckily for me, this particular manager is actually uh, the assistant manager of the store. So that's actually a really good thing. It's something that I can say helps make the job look, actually look forward to in the future. Let me go ahead and explain how I came to this reasoning. So, for those who don't know, during fast food there's a timer that's always set um, to tell you how long it's going, how long you have to hand the food out. Speed of service. Um, as well, kind of what the industry calls it. No shock there, given that it's called fast food, but a lot of the time with this, people have a tendency to subside quality 
and sometimes even quantity when it comes to this just so they can keep up with the SOS. Yeah. I know. It's weird how speed of service always is a... It, it, it's also SOS. But anyway. And one of the managers at the store I work at do, does it to a point that just is stupidly unreasonable. Um, it'll get pushed upon the person and next thing you know it they'll actually get mad at the speed of service, or at least agitated. If the speed of service doesn't match a specific requirement. And a lot of the time where I work, I am the only one making food, and believe me, when you don't have somebody else helping on that front, it's a pain in the butt to do. It's very difficult to do. That time, quite frankly, is near impossible to meet. Unless you have so much experience that it's it's uncanny. But you literally have to have been under the company name for like four or five years for that to be the case for the most part. Sometimes for some people less. For the most part that is the case. And today was another one of those days where I, I, I knew that that person was going to get frustrated, just they weren't even there. But their shift was that of later on, that even if it wasn't, they have eyesight of where, where things were flowing. And the particular manager I'm referring to who gets agitated I knew once they found out they were just going to go into some kind of frustration mode where it's like, you're unreasonable, it is where my mind would go if they did it while I was there. Luckily, they didn't get there before I left, first of all. But second of all, even if they did, I would have gotten to a point where I was like, they wouldn't have wanted to be around me anyway. Not because I get physical or anything, I don't do that, but just because I was already getting agitated at the day because of that particular statement that's running through my head must always keep those times and the fact that I was pretty much doing that entire thing like what it felt like was on my own. And I, def I knew I definitely wasn't meeting that quota but it shouldn't be doable anyway. However, because of that factor, the manager who is on shift at the moment, the assistant manager who, by the way, is also new um, at the store, but not quite new at the company, just at the store. The assistant manager actually recognized the irritation in me and started having me do outward different things. And it wasn't specifically like just one thing they had me do. They had me do several different things that needed to be done for sure, but weren't that one specific thing. Recog not not because they wanted to get it done, because I was doing what I could at the same speed. It was more at, at, at a good enough speed for them, at least. It was more that they recognized the amount of irritation and frustration that was going to my head because of this particular factor, and they were like, you know what, why don't you uh, come do this portion of the job instead, and I'll take over there. It'll give you a little bit of a break from that and give you some time to cope. Immediately when I, when, when, when this particular manager did that, I was like, you actually care about your employees. <laughs> and the reason I say it, I didn't say this by the way to him, I just thought it. And the reason I thought it is because, bear in mind, I have worked 
five different fast food industries, I believe. Taco Bell being the first, and longest as of right now. Um, Wendy's being the actual shortest, because it was like for two months, if even. Um, maybe it was just four. McDonald's and here. Yeah, I think it was just four. Huh. Now, there have been other, other workplaces, but of those four, this is literally the only time where somebody has actually legitimately looked at the situation and gone, they need a break, I'll take over, I'll let them do something that I know they do well, and I know that um, is needed to be done, and I know won't stress them out to the bitter end. They recognized that, and they had me go do that. Unfortunately, by the time I started doing it, I was already mentally getting to that point where I was like, no, I, 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 I can't anymore. Normally, I don't think that about the jobs that I do. Yes, even fast food, but in this case, because of this one teeny tiny detail that I was explaining earlier, I just couldn't. It, you, you start me in a bad, uh, in a place that's going to put me in a bad point. If I'm already beyond that bad point, I stick there. Luckily, he, this manager, he, he, he recognized even this. After about an hour of me doing the particular task that he sent me in to do, he actually sent me off to do something that had nothing to do with, like, keeping this speed of service going but still was definitely necessary with what was going on. Um, it needed to be done, and I was one of like two people who knew how to do it. In the moment, I was the best option because it was something I could take my time with, actually cool my mind down, and help take care of. That's exactly what I did. By the time I was done with that, it was actually time for me to go home anyway, but with all that aside, I guess my, my point is just, and all this explanation, this one manager is one of very few, unfortunately, that you come across in this particular industry who actually care about the person, where their mindset is, their well-being. To me, what makes a good manager is more somebody who, when you're struggling with something, appro they'll approach the matter, like analyze what's going on, and make options and suggestions on what could be done to make it better. This particular manager did exactly that. A little bit beyond the how I'm describing it. But it's something that I can't just not talk about on here. It's it's something that I really appreciate in some managers. And unfortunately, unlike the balance that I started talking about at the very beginning of this video, this particular aspect is stupidly rare. Because most managers anywhere are just bad people. However, when it comes to the good ones, all of us are at least lucky enough to always find, like, quite a few of those. The longer you stick around, the more you find. It's unfortunate that there are more bad managers than there are good. At least this is kind of from my experience. Now, bear in mind, when I say bad managers, I'm not talking about, like, CEOs, CFOs, like, way up their leaders. I'm just talking about who oversee what's going on in the location where things get done. For example, if you want an example of bad managers, Walmart. Every single Walmart I've gone to, I always have the... There's one or two employees who complain about how poorly they're treated. 
McDonald's. Same concept, just for fast food. And that includes where I worked. Except where I worked, they were so bad that they didn't even care if the orders got wrong. Someone would come back, they'd be like, yeah, yeah, we'll make it again. Just send them to the window. If they made it wrong, they don't care. It's kind of the same concept from what I understand with Walmart as well. That one's more off of just what I've heard, not really what I've experienced. But either way, where I work now, this particular manager is one of a handful of good apples in the industry that you'll ever find. And probably one of the even better ones, too. Because, sure, there are good managers in the industry, but there are even more rare of that where you they actually legitimately care, analyze, and take action off of the situations. There are good ones out there who will care but they won't do anything. They'll just listen, say, I'm sorry, but this needs to get done, and then move on. It's even, le it's less common when there's a manager out there who said, who actually listens, says, I'm sorry, um, is there anything I can do to make it better for you that will allow you to at least keep doing your job? Or they'll say, here's some suggestions, would you rather just do this instead? and I'll take over for it, like what happened for me today. It's so uncommon and so rare where there are managers like that, that it's just pathetic. But it's something that I'm really grateful I've, that, I, I'm very grateful that I have a boss like that. Um, even more grateful that this particular manager it's kind of funny because I was gonna finish that sentence still now, but I find it kind of funny how this particular manager that I have, the GM of the store, really good manager, really good person. Again, a rare exception of one of those like golden apples. I'll call him that. The, the extremely rare one, I mean, like the one that this particular assistant manager is. The store manager claimed that this the assistant manager was going to be very strict, very stern, much more than he is. This assistant manager shows up and... Quite frankly, it was like he, he was the direct opposite. It's like the world was trying to play a troll on all of us. If... This manager was as strict or stern as we were originally led to believe. What had happened would not have taken place. The kind of manager that we had, assistant manager that he had gotten, I was, uh, there are people at the store I work at who I have met him before, I love him. I'm starting to understand why. Um, because this particular uh, manager he analyzes situations and goes, okay. He like looks at the employees, analyzes everyone, works around how each individual person works and how to work with them, and he'll do it that way. As if they were like different psychological patients in like therapy sessions. Like, this person, I can work with them and keep a good balance by talking this way and doing this. This person, I'll have to do it this way and this. Honestly, our gym is like the only person who actually does that. On his good days, but everyone has bad days, so I don't, I'm not even going to go into that. All of us have bad days, all of us have good days, that's kind of why. This is something that's so rare, I'm amazed it's it turned out this way, but I'm glad it did. Because psychologically, I definitely wouldn't 
do well if the manager was any... If it, if it was anything like our GM was claiming he was going to be, I would not do well. But it's actually way better. And I am grateful for that. Golden Apple Managers, which is what I'm going to call them at this point, are so, so rare. But so, so appreciated. Because of the way they approach things. So, what makes this a big deal? Well, in case... I, I did explain the entire story of what was going on today and that made me realize this. What makes it a big deal... Go, why, why are Golden Apple managers so important? Well, let's look at this from a business perspective. If managers were to run places in a way where they didn't care, or in a way where they were like, okay, but just keep doing it, like stuff like that, no one would work anywhere. Psychologically speaking, No one would work if they didn't get something good from it. That's one of the few reasons why payment started happening in the first place. It was a psychological study done so long ago, it's almost irrelevant. The study basically showcased that people who... They, they put um, individuals into workplaces, offered money to half of them, offer nothing to the other half. The half that they offer money to were more likely to consistently work, was the other half, the percentage was so small it's not even worth saying. The rest of the other people would just be like, what's the point? We're not getting paid. Not even going to do anything. But over time, that kind of reward psychological roar kind of just fades. It's not that you just need that anymore. It's also the fact that you need some kind of motivator. And when a manager doesn't care or cares but doesn't act on it, that's not a motivator. That's either a bad apple or a good apple. Sometimes you just need golden apple managers to be able to confront a job and move forward with it and actually work with it. It's honestly saddening how few of these there are. Bear in mind, once again, I'm not referring, I'm not including people like CEOs or CFOs of any kind of company because for the most part, I've actually met, I, I've met a couple before and they're all great people. So, Workplace-wise and in person, like, personally knowing kind of thing. So there you have it. Managers out there, if you're not a Golden Apple one, take notes, I guess. From the Golden Apple ones. Either that, or, hey, if you're looking for people who you want to use to be manager, be managers of certain circumstances, consider those aspects. Look for someone like that. But either way around, I'm going to leave this here. I've got some stuff I have to take care of anyway, so thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you liked it, make sure to give the video a like, and consider subscribing to the channel if you like this kind of stuff. Want to check out any of the discussion rant type videos, click the link in the side of my head over here. Um, or if this isn't quite floating about, why not click the link on the other side where... You might find something you may enjoy a bit more. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for tuning in. I've got hiccups suddenly. <sighs> but thanks again for tuning in, guys. We hope to see you guys in another one. Bye.